Hello. This is an RG351M from Anbernic. This is an RG351P from Anbernic. What's the difference? This one's got a metal shell and this one's plastic. That's about it really. <laughs> and I've already done a review of this. So if you want to know what this is like, watch the review of that. Thank you for watching. Um, no. I, I need to do more than that, really, don't I? Um, okay, there is one, one reason and two reasons I like this more than this. One, this is metal. It looks nicer. It feels nicer. Um, it just feels more of a quality product. Also, I like the D-pad more. There's not much difference in it. Um, but I find that notchy and it, 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 there's a little bit of resistance in the movement when you're kind of transitioning from horizontal to vertical on something like jetpack and you're trying to move around smoothly and it gets in the way and it annoys the crap out of me. This one does it a little bit but not as bad. It's a bit smoother. That is about it. Um... So what the hell can I do in this video, since they're, they're, they're the same animal? Um, Performance-wise, exactly the same. Operating system, exactly the same. What can I show you, like, value for money-wise? Because this I bought with Patreon money, so, you know, you deserve a decent video. I know. Okay, let's turn this thing on. As you can see, this doesn't have the standard operating system. These things come with Emulec as standard. I hate Emulec. Can't stand it. There's a variation on that called 351 Elec. Also don't like that. This has Arcos in it. Um, uh, if I can find it, I'll put a link to a tutorial on how to install that. Other people do it better than me, so uh, I'll, I'll link to one of them. Um, there is a new update to this version of Arcos. Um, there's a video uh, explaining how to install that. I will link to that. What does the latest Arcos have that makes it worth showing a video of it? Updated emulators for the Dreamcast and Sega Saturn, which both of them were kind of... Well, the Saturn was a complete non-starter. It would play one game, and the Dreamcast was okay, but not quite there. Um, games would play, but they wouldn't... They, they, you, if you had to use frame skip, uh, and even then the sound would be kind of crackly and crunchy and break up a little bit. It wasn't great. So, um, I'll show you what it's like now. Actually, the one that would really demonstrate it brilliantly, I can't show you because that's Crazy Taxi, but copyright music being what it is, uh, I would get hammered for showing you that. So what one, what, what can I show? Um, oh yeah. Also, I found sometimes the controls weren't right on um, certain games. I just couldn't make them run because while the emulator ran the game, it didn't respond to the controls. And I couldn't seem to, it didn't seem to matter what I did, they just wouldn't play. Um, here, well, certainly on the Dreamcast, they do. There's not a lot I can say. about this. I mean, you know the game, you know how emulators work, all that kind of thing. I'm just showing you the performance of it really, just to show this works. Uh, you've got to use the analog stick for this and you've got to use the, uh, the shoulder buttons to accelerate and brake and I suck at it. I'll be honest, I don't actually like Daytona. Um, I don't like the way it handles and it doesn't matter what system I play it on, whether it's on the Saturn, the Dreamcast, uh, there's a arcade perfect conversion of it on the PS3. 
don't like any of them because I don't like the handling of the car. It's too twitchy. But the fact that you can run this, the Dreamcast version, on the RG351 really well, I think is great. So it's, it's a good game to demonstrate that they've got the emulation working really quite nicely. You can hear the sound is not breaking up and crunchy and, and broken like it is when emulators aren't working well. And that's really pleasing. Let's have a look at another. What else can we look at? What would be a good... You see, I just want to go for the racing games. <laughs> Looney Tunes Space Race. Um, I'll, 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 yeah, we'll give that one a go. Not because it's anything special. In fact, I'm not even sure that it runs at full speed. But this is one that wouldn't run on the earlier firmware. Can I remember what the controls are? Not necessarily. That ain't it. That ain't it. Where's the... There we go. Right trigger button. I do like this game. I can't tell if it's running at full speed or not. I can't tell if it's making all the right noises or not. But it is more playable than last time I tried it on the RG351. It just... It ran, but I couldn't steer it. For some reason, on, on that earlier version of Arcos, it just... The controls weren't mapped correctly. Some games worked, but this one didn't. And I couldn't seem to do anything about it. Which was very frustrating, because I like this game. I like the whole cartoony style of it. I have no idea what half of these pickups do. Whoops! Ooh. I wonder if that shamrock's some kind of shield, like you have luck. So that other people's weapons don't work on you. Maybe. Not a clue, really. Okay, let's move on, just demonstrating that that works. So yeah, all of these games that you can see listed here work, and they work well, which is really pleasing. But there's more, because what else works? Sega Saturn. Now, I can't say that all of these work well. Um, I can say that they all work. I'll show you the extent to which they do or don't work well. The only one I would say that works really well is this KO Flying Squadron 2. Um, this, as far as I can tell, runs at full speed. Uh, which I, I had this running on the previous version of Arcos, and it was the only Saturn game that I could make run at all. Now... I do have difficulty with this in that this, the Saturn emulator on this version of Arcos, it's, it's running on a different emulator. Um, it's not using RetroArch, it's using something different as a standalone emulator using the, oh god, it's not your bore, say it's the other one. And I've forgotten. The core is one that bleh, anyone who's using these kind of emulators will be familiar with. I've forgotten the name of it. Um, but some I, the, the front end of the emulator, I can't get access to it from here. I can't map the controls. It's literally you've got to use the controls that it gives you. And on some games those controls are just messed up. This is not ideal. Um, oh, balls. One of the controls is this left, whoops, left shoulder button. Wow, I'm, I'm doing really badly. Um, I 
yeah, you you've got you got the jump which we're using. You've got a pickup control, and you've got a like use weapon control. The, these yeah, this detail you've got a hammer. How do we pick that up? That's pick it up right and left shoulder button to use the hammer. And it's not ideal. I'd really rather be using a face button, and I can't alter it. I can't get into the settings on this version of the emulator. Oh, you bugger. You see, tr going for the, the shoulder button, it just... It's not intuitive. But the game itself runs really well on this emulator. And some games, the controls are mapped just fine, and some aren't. It's inconsistent, and I don't understand. Um, okay, let's let's try other games so you can see how well Saturn works on here. Can't remember what the controls are. I've got a feeling it was a, something odd. Okay, it's right shoulder button to accelerate. Steering is very, it's not very responsive. It takes an age. It's, it's on the, uh, it's on the D-pad and you've got to have it held down for quite a while before it turns, which the game is clearly not running at full speed, but it is running at a speed that makes it worth playing, at least just to see the sprite scaling engine on this that is really cool. But the problem is the steering response is so slow that very often you just can't get out of the way of these oncoming cars quickly enough. I mean, this would be a very... whoops, I just couldn't avoid that. This would be a very playable game if the steering was more responsive. In fact, some of these sprite scaling games, at full speed, they're too fast. They're too fast if you're an old git like me anyway. So having them run slower is actually a good thing. It's just that you need the controls to be more responsive and this isn't Okay. So this works. Again, you need to use the D-pad. I say it works. It's a bit slow. Okay, it's a lot slow, but that doesn't matter. What the biggest issue with this is that graphical glitching that you can see. Um, I don't know why it does it. It's a shame. It's not a game breaker, but it probably won't stop me messing around with it for five minutes if I've got a little bit of time to kill. But it's certainly not something you would show off to your friends to say, hey, look what this handheld can do. It's a shame if it was if it didn't have that graphical glitching. Um, getting a decent version of hard driving or race driving going on a handheld, up until now I've been like playing the Mega Drive version, which I really like. And I love the Saturn version. Um, I could put up with this lack of speed if it weren't for that glitching um, I would be very very pleased as it is I'm just slightly pleased I hope that a future update will fix that that would be great I'm not convinced that we're doing over a hundred miles an hour here not really no we might be doing about 20 <laughs> But, you know, lack of realism in terms of sense of speed, uh, that aside, it's nice that this works, even with the glitching. Okay. I didn't want that. Didn't want that. Don't know what the accelerator is. That's, that's the accelerator. How do we get... Right. Well, as you can see, that's not playable. The sound is 
broken. The frame rate is not there. It's a shame. I don't know if they'll be able to improve things enough to make this playable. On the upside, the 32X version of Virtual Racing runs just fine on this handheld. So, you know, it's not a biggie. I just wanted to demonstrate what the game runs like on the Saturn. So, Power Drift is probably the most gobsmackingly impressive game that uses the Sega Sprite Scaler, Super Scaler engine. Um, it's massively fast and any home system that can come close to replicating it is absolutely gobsmacking. So a handheld, a, a cheap hundred and something pound handheld that can do it? Good lord! Uh, it sort of just about can, barely. Um, it is too slow compared to the arcade thing, but, like I was saying earlier, that some games run slower is actually good. <laughs> it allows you to uh, think about what you're doing just a little bit. The problem with this is the gear change. Um, and this comes back to that control mapping being wrong and you not being able to adjust it because you'll never believe where the gear shift controls are on here. To shift into high gear, I've got to press the start button, which, guess what? It pauses the game. Now if I press that again, we're in high gear. whoop de bloody do! who the hell thought that was a clever idea? And to shift down, I've got to press R3, which is the right analogue stick. I've got to press that, like, click. There, and we're in low gear. Um, mental. You've got all these other controls that you could use, but they choose two of the most utterly stupid. Um, <laughs> it's just it's dumb. What I tend to do is put it in high gear and leave it there and hope for the best. Though, I mean, uh, even played slow like this, I suck at it. I'm not, I'm not going to get anywhere or win any races or whatever. But it is slow enough that you can perhaps not crash every other turn. You've got time to react, even if you've got like, slow responses like mine. Um, if they can sort this out with an update, give you access to the control mapping, this will be fantastic. I mean, it'd be nice if they could optimise the speed a bit more. It's probably asking a bit much. They're probably pushing it to the limit a lot. But the fact that it's working to this degree at all pleases me. Um, it's significant progress. Some of these games are really quite playable. The Sega Ages Volume 1 with like, um, what you call it? Space Harrier really playable. That's the only one I've actually tried on there. I haven't tried Outrun or Afterburner, but I would imagine they would be much the same. I mean, you've got other, you've got arcade emulators on here, so playing them, not such a big deal anyway. Um, Power Drift, I think I played on here and found it unplayable, so actually playing the Saturn version is preferable. But really, you know, I'm just showing those to show that it will do it. The Saturn emulation is very hit and miss. Um, the only game I've tried that I would say is full speed is um, KO Flying Squadron. Everything else is a bit slow, but not necessarily unplayable. Um, it really comes down to the controls. They're a bit hit and miss. It's a long way from perfect, but it's interesting, and I don't know any other handheld at this price that will do it. Uh, you can't do it on the RG351V yet, because they haven't got Arcos on that yet. Um, can't do it on the RG350. You can do it basically RG350M, 350P. I don't know what other handhelds are using the uh, Arcos firmware. The RGB10? Don't know. 
RK2020, why would you? Hmm, but there you are. That is the RG351M, lovely handheld, growing in capability. Absolutely, if you're going to get one of these, put the Arcos firmware on it, ditch that MU Elec rubbish. Um, don't even bother with 351 Elec, go for Arcos. It's very impressive. It makes the handheld a more viable option, I think. It's, it was like a little bit questionable when it first came out. PSP emulation is very limited. Um, Dreamcast was quite limited. Saturn was pretty much non-existent. It, it's improving and that's very pleasing. So yes, once again, I would like to say thank you to my supporters on Patreon who uh, have enabled me to bring you this video. And um, even though I didn't know what I was going to do initially, this Arcos update has proved quite a revelation and makes it a worthwhile video, I hope. Uh, yes. God, I don't know what I'm doing. Gonna be bringing an RG350M video soon. I wouldn't call it a review, more of a, is there a reason to buy one of these still? anymore. Coming soon. Watch out for that. Yeah, click the link down below somewhere if you'd like to see more videos like this in my hardware review playlist. Thank you. Um, it says here Bedway offers his thanks to those who subscribe to his Patreon account thing. Uh, is that what he needs? <laughs>